So we've got our cage painted and ready to go. Came out very good. We'll talk a little more in depth about paint in a different part of the video. I've got a little bit of overspray and drips here and there from my tape lines. Uh, I'll probably come back through later and clean that up. But frankly, I'm a bit impatient and I wanna see how this thing looks assembled. So we're gonna put it together. At least some parts of it. There's some other parts that are still drying, so I might jump around a little bit. Well, it won't be jumped around for you. So that guy goes right there. Cage does have a couple layers of clear coat on it, but still, it's not even assembled. I wanna avoid <laughs> scratching it. Also by assembling some of these parts, I'll be able to figure out which pieces I actually need to bother cleaning. Because if they're on the inside, I don't care. Now that goes a long ways in. That's our front wheel well assembled. Looks very good other than a little bit of paint issues right there. I'm gonna do the other one, we'll be right back. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna be assembling the rear, uh, I guess you'd call it a bulkhead, uh, with the fuel tank. This is going to be a little bit tricky, so you kind of have to assemble it in midair. Mm, not too bad. Looks like this should go I believe it goes right here yeah it can't possibly go on the other side so it has to go here I'm gonna snap fit these this one into place yep that's definitely how it goes Now the directions call for putting the receiver box lid on now. I am not going to do that. I'm going to do electronics last. Also, don't think I'm going to put my receiver in there. I think I'm going to put my light controller in there, I believe. <clears throat> it should be pretty trivial to weave the... Whoa. All right, so that's something you got to be careful with this part is you got to hold that so it doesn't twist around. So brace that way. There we go. Like I said, the directions call for the receiver box lid, but that seems kind of silly to me. All right, now we're going to <coughs> attach the rear bulkhead to the left half of the frame. Now I have put the top window on and the front bumper. Sorry, I have put the top, uh, the windshield and the roof and the front bumper on, which is a little out of order, but uh, I was feeling impatient. <laughs> Nothing tricky about those pieces. When you put the front on, make sure you get the hood, the hood pivots on. And that's, uh, that's really about it there. So this calls for a litany of different screws. And I am 
press fitting everything into its appropriate hole before I, well, almost everything. I might need to stretch a couple of them around. So like, like so now I should have had these screws out already. So again, be very careful with which screws it's going for. I'm going to start with the 120. So we're going to flip the whole thing over without it falling apart. And actually having the front bumper on and the roof on first is making this easier because the cage will stand up on its own, mostly. The 120 goes into the gas tank right here. The gas tank, the rear bulkhead structure. What I'm going to do here, I think, is I'm going to start a bunch of them. I think I've got all the screws I need. Now I'm going to mate these up. A lot of this is going to be sped way up because it's quite boring. Make sure that your, oh sorry, make sure your hinge pin is up when you initially made it on here. So I think I'm going to start at the front. And I'm making sure that the collars are going together the whole way along. There's definitely some kind of bending that you need to do as you go here. Whoa. Okay. Um, so I think I'm going to put a couple screws in <coughs> along the way here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the front and probably the back if I can make it happen first. One of the back ones at least. Yeah, so there's definitely some kind of just like force bending into place here. All right, so I've got way back here clicked in. In three places. I'm going to do the furthest back way back here. I've got one error in my painting back here. This should be white. <sighs> it happens. It's pretty hidden. Yeah, see these longer ones up here? I'm cracking my paint. It'll be hidden by the roof, though. 
And frankly, after a season of running this thing, it'll look like it fell off a cliff, so it's fine. Sorry about that. We gotta get the rest of the screws now, but we are together. We are a real car. All right, we're gonna continue on with our assembly. We've got the cage fully screwed together at this point. Uh, it looks real good. There are some paint oversprays. Uh, here and there, I've got a little bit of paint in there, I've got a little paint over here, and I've tried and tried to get them out using rubbing alcohol, and it's just not working. Um, so, we're pretty good here. The next part we're going to do is we're going to put the grill in, we're going to put some lights in. My lights are all from uh, My Trick RC. Um, I'll put the product spotlight right here. For lighting for this rig, in addition to the factory light bar that comes stock with the unit, I am going with an Mitric RC uh, lighting system. This is, I believe, the BDR1 system and some attack rock lights. So I love my lighting. Um, I apologize for the cricket in the background. <laughs> I can't find where he is in my garage. Uh, so these are some high intensity rock lights. I do a lot of driving at night. Um, and then this is a full light kit. I've got, uh, I'm going to have yellow headlights, red tail lights. Um, the oranges are for exhaust backfire, and you're going to start seeing me installing these uh, as we go along. I love the Mitric RC stuff. These things are programmable for like eight or nine different modes. He just came out with a new uh, version of this. I think it's the BD2, if I'm getting the model number right. Um, really nice, really high quality products. The main place I'm the least happy with my paint job is on the grill. I really wanted this bar to be white with the Axial logo painted red, which looks good, but I got overspray on the grill and up here. And try as I might, I can't get it off. So I'm kind of stuck with that unless I want to buy a new grill, which I don't want to do. So unfortunate as it is, uh, I am stuck with that. So I'm gonna start by installing the headlights now, I like that 90s yellow fog light look. This unit doesn't have fog lights, but it does have headlights. So we are installing yellow headlights in the grill. These are real easy to install. If I can find all my tools. The light buckets that Axial provides are very nice. So we're gonna get the frame out of here for a minute. Super easy, if you've never done lighting, uh, the Mitric RC stuff is a great place to start. That's, you know, it's pre-done. You don't have to do any soldering, um, anything like that. I 
really like their product line, and they are the only company I can find that offers backfire effect lighting. Uh, I do have RC drifters, and those all have backfire lighting, um, but for some reason it hasn't really made it outside of there, um, and a lot of these really powerful rigs backfire, so I figured why would you not have that in a crawler. I apologize for the cricket. I have hunted and hunted and hunted for him, and I cannot find him. <laughs> he is hiding behind some shelves in my garage. I just can't get him out. Um, this lighting kit is, or this, uh, the way Axial has this set up is actually pretty nice. A lot of times with some of the light kits, you get a lot of spillage out in the back um, of the headlight buckets, but these little shields they provide uh, do actually cover almost the entire back. You might still get a little bit of spillage out of the sides, but not much. If I have a problem, I've got some black hot glue that I will put in there. Alright, so we're going to install this into the body. I am skipping the driver panel for the moment. It's not painted. I don't have the proper paint in yet. It's been on order for a bit. Uh, but I am going to be skipping the driver panel for the moment, so I will come back to that later. Also, by skipping the driver panel, I, I'll be able to figure my wiring out better. Um, Alright, this is a lot of wire. <laughs> I definitely don't need this much wire. All right, these two screws that hold the grill on are actually structural also. Um, that's a two and a half. That's not the right one. Two. Um, these countersunk screws in the front here are structural screws that are the last bit to hold the front of the, the frame together. These seem probably bigger than they should be, but we will see. Ah, uh, oh geez. Yeah, so this is just going into the front of the grill. And it's been telling me in the manual as I go along to install things like the receiver, and such, uh, I really want to understand how the wire, how the chassis layout does that. I am a bit of a snob when it comes to cable management. I have a background in PC building, um, and I love good cable management. I have wire looms for all of these wires, so you, I don't have exposed, um, you know, black and yellow wires or black and red wires. They're all going to be in nice crisp clean, uh, I think I got white loom, but it'll look super clean. Okay, I must not have used the right screws here. Oh, I used the right screws and I missed the holes on both. <laughs> so, there's a tip for you. Be careful of the lineup on the back side. I'll show you in a minute here. So this screw has to go through the grill and into this black piece, but you have to hold that right there while you do it because it's not quite lined up when you initially start. I thought it felt a little too easy. Come on. Got to get our threads cutting. All right, there we go, I think. No, we're still not quite lined up right. Interesting. Hmm, so that's a little trickier than I thought it was going to be. Alright, so we've got that in. As I said, it's been telling me to install electronics, which I just haven't done. Um, because I want to know where everything's going. Because I don't particularly like where it's telling me to install the electronics. Alright, so. We need a light bar. 
and looks like the battery tray. All right, so I've actually found a misprint. Um, so for the light bar mounts, it's telling you to use AXI235098, which over here says two and a half by eight millimeter. However, that's not correct. It calls for 2.5 by six millimeter. Um, and nowhere on this entire page is that called out. So this is actually supposed to be the 9.7. These guys are littler. If you look at the screws that go into the light bar, where did I put the light bar? Over here. If you look at the light bar mount, there's no way you're gonna fit a full size screw in there. So you gotta use these little shorties. So that's a, a fun little uh, find. Oh, and actually it looks like my light bar is slightly deformed as well. Look at that. My light bar has a molding error. Well, that's fun. All right, so I'm going to start our uh, assembly here. First thing we do is this is the battery uh, mount. We're going to put this little piece on the back. I'm assuming this is another wire guide it would appear. Uh, one and eight. These are these button heads. So these are the uh, 2.5s by 8 mil. All right, I've got the right screws now. Yeah, so be real careful when you're assembling this part. Or, well, I guess all of the parts, right, that you're using the proper diameter screws. 2.5s are the skinny ones in the kit. You can see the difference between a 2.5 and a 3. It's subtle, but it's there. It makes a difference when you're trying to cut threads. And when you're trying to use the wrong driver. Alright, so we've got the channel guard, or the, the cable guards, on our, our little, uh, this is the back of the battery tray. That one is not tight enough. There we go. So it took me a minute to figure this out. This is a little tricky. So this is the back half of the battery tray. It's adjustable. You've got these ridges here. And the bottom of this side has these ridges. So basically what you do is those ridges hold it together. And then you're going to put screws in through the top. You need to adjust it. See the ridges go against the ridges right there. But you need to adjust it to fit the batteries you are using. I'm going to yank this out the front for the moment because it is in the way. Um, well, so if you don't know what battery you're using at this stage, um, probably leave it at the wide open one. I use these Traxxas 1400 milliamp three cells. Um, I know there's lots of people who say Traxxas is overpriced and all that. I don't want to hear it. It's fine. I like Traxxas batteries, so leave me alone. A moment of truth here. Do they fit? Ooh, that's, you know, I assumed they would, and they do. Great. So I'm going to put the battery in like so, and now I'm going to see what I need, where I need this to sit um, for this battery to fit. Now it looks like I can go all the way closed, giving me maximum room Yep, in the cage itself. I might go one, actually if I go more, if I don't go full closed, it might bounce around on me. So yeah, I'm gonna go fully closed with this. That fits in there perfectly. So that answers another question I know I've seen people ask online is what batteries fit the front of the Capra? Because they're, uh, they're, you know, they're pretty small, and I know a lot of people do not use Traxxas batteries. They use other stuff from Amazon. I like Traxxas's warranties. Um, you know, it is what it is. The few pennies I'm saving, I don't really, whoa, uh, mind not saving for the Traxxas warranties. All right, so this is a little tricky. You got to get these recessed screws to. Go in there, and when, 
they're not magnetized, that makes it even harder. Luckily, you can just get them started and then you can adjust it. You don't need to take these fully out to do this. And the tray slides side to side on top of forward to back. So it basically everything is moving and it's deep down in a hole that you can't really get to. Um, so you've, you've basically got everything working against you on this, putting this piece together. So I'm going to do this on the side. Sorry, you can't see, but basically I'm just holding the piece in the right spot. And I think I got it. Yep. Start that one. I'm going to start the next one in the same manner. I'm going to turn it on its side, line it up so I can see the hole. And drop the screw. <laughs> Ugh, yeah, this is a this is a there's a lot of tricky parts to this. Just from a getting things to stay together standpoint. Well, you put them together. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna get most of the way with both of them in, but not down. You can still move this forward and back. But as I said, I am going for full forward, as closed as we can get. <clears throat> so I'm going to hold that in place with my bottom hand and screw that down so those teeth stay nice and secure. And this is definitely one you don't want to overdo as you may be moving it later. And these um, these 1400 milliamp batteries, um, I use them in my TRX4 Sport, which is a heavy rig. Um, they get me, and it has a lot more lights than this one does, and they get me 45 minutes of runtime, which I think is more than acceptable, given the performance benefits you get of running such a small battery. I'm going to test myself here, make sure it still fits. Okay, it's moved a little. That's interesting. Why did it move? What moved? I think it's just... Okay, it's just pushing the back out a little bit. That's okay. A little tension means I probably won't need to run Velcro or anything, so... That's nice. Alright, now we're going to put the light bar on. Now... There doesn't appear to be an up or down on this, but given that I have a molding error, I'm going to put the molding error down so it's less visible. Now this is actually pretty nice because the... Well, I feel like the light bar maybe should have gone on at an earlier stage. <laughs> you gotta really... Like something's gonna... Okay, bend the light bar. Don't try to bend the cage, bend the light bar. There's your tip for that section. <laughs> um, and then you need shorty screws for the short, thin screws. You need the two and a half mils, not the three mils. The three mils will ruin the light bar for sure. Actually, I feel like the roof should have gone on first here, but this is what the manual says to do. Granted, I am using an aftermarket roof, but we'll see. <laughs> It's only two screws, easy enough to back out if I have to. Actually, before I put this one in, I think I'm going to make sure I... So I'm going to run this wire down here first. And I want those going into the cage. I don't want them going into my roof, I think. Maybe I do if I end up mounting the light controller further back. I do have more lights in the rear, I think, than the front, at least that the, the light controller is running. This light bar, I, maybe I'll convert it to run off the light controller, I don't know. The 
light controllers, if you overvolt them, tend to go up in flames. <laughs> All right, now we are into the real moment of truth here, and that is mounting the body to the chassis. So we get to mate the cage to the body now. Uh, the way to do this, you don't want to like grab the cage and pull. That's not going to work. What you want to do, you got the front to the left here, your front or your left here, and you want to slide it in. So I have to slide a little crook crooked because of my heat sink, but basically you kind of just slide it in right like that. And you do want to be somewhat aware of your wiring, but I'm probably going to feed that all through in a minute. So line up. And I think everything is one of these 18 mil screws here. Uh, and I'm going to start with the bottom four first. These are all 18 mil screws. I'm gonna go around the cage, mating it up, uh, and you will see the result of that uh, shortly. All right, so I'm in the middle of putting the cage on. One thing I would like to note is these four at the bottom. There's only eight screws that hold the cage to the body. Four right here, two here, two here, and then the shock mounts. So those are the only four that are holding the whole cage on. These four thread on really hard, like, I was worried I was going to strip them. I think the plastic that they used for that chassis mount plate is way harder than normal. So those take force um, to get on. I've got the drivetrain bolted on. Uh, so that's just the two screws here and the two screws here on each side. So eight in total. Um, I will say I had bought some GPM racing shock keys because uh, I read online that you can flip them over to um, run 100 millimeter shocks but with the stock ride height uh, so that works great in the back doesn't work at all in the front unless you cut piece of this uh, inner fender away which I don't want to do so I'm running at the stock shock locations at the moment uh, the shocks have way too much power <laughs> but I don't have the big heavy wheels in the back um, I don't have the big heavy wheels on yet, so I think once these are on, it'll probably drop free. Either way, I'm going to be taking these shocks apart to put the other, um, <clears throat> the other uh, springs in them, I think. So, your next tip, and I'm going to have to move you around a bit here, is that when you're doing your wiring for your front servo and your headlights, uh, I initially went through this little gap right here. That's not what you're supposed to do. So they did provide the channel guard down here. You want to go under the center, because if you go over here, you're going to have problems with your battery. So I'm going to route those underneath. Uh, I'm further complicating things with my reservoir shocks. Um, I have quite a few concerns <laughs> with how those are going to line up at this point. Um, I also have my servo wire tangled through them. Alright, so I'm going to clip my servo wire under that little clippy they provide. If I can. Alright, I'm going to slide it off to the side actually. And I'm going to have to undo all of this, but I want to plan my wiring out. Like I said, I'm kind of a, a snob when it comes to cable management. Um, so I tend to like wire everything up and then unwire it. If you don't care, then this will take you a hell of a lot less time than it's going to take me. Gosh, this is tricky. I understand. I'm beginning to understand why they instruct you to do this stuff ahead of time uh, before you really assemble the whole cage. But... Alright, so that's clamped down. Like I said, these are going to have a nice wire sheathing over them. We're going to drop the wires through the floor. Pick the rig up. 
make sure we've got them well chased all the way down here. That's on the wrong side of the drive shaft is the problem. So we gotta get that, and there we go, through the right side of the drive shaft, pull that wire all the way down. And then we're gonna pump it back up. Uh, so I'm gonna go to the right with the lights. And the left. Sorry if I'm not in frame here. We're pretty, this is pretty un uh, unwieldy phase <laughs> of wiring. Um, oh boy. Tweezers. To help me here. I need this one and I just can't reach it. There we go. Alright, so these are tangled again. So, on this front bulkhead there's basically there's three places to amount to mount electronics easily on this this machine here here and back here so it was calling for the receiver to be back here um, I don't know if I like that honestly so I've got so I have one additional unit that I have to mount which is the light controller um, in addition to my transmitter, this is a Futaba uh, R304SB, I run Futaba transmitters, and my ESC is a uh, Hobbywing 1080 um, for brushed. Now, I gotta do some soldering on this, um, so I'm probably just gonna test fit it in place, but, uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna figure out where these are all gonna go. The trick to <clears throat> good cable management is pre-planning. Basically, is what it comes down to. Um, if you don't pre-plan, you rarely end up with a clean system. So, uh, put all that to the side. So we've got the electronics we are gonna need. We've got our ESC. We've got our receiver. And we've got our light controller. So, you haven't seen the rest of the lights yet. I've got a bunch of lights that are going to be going in the back. So actually, I think I need to fit the lights first. I believe I have more lights in the rear than I do in the front. Because I like lights. So, we're going to fit those up. We're going to fit up these uh, reservoirs on all four corners. And... Uh, so my plan for the reservoirs is I like the side-by-side -side look where the reservoirs are mounted up on the cage. So I think I'm going to mount these on the cage. The problem is that the mounting brackets for them are meant for the shocks. So this side is the right one for the reservoir, but that's gigantic. I could maybe make some kind of bracket that would make that work, but it'll just look silly, I think. So I'm going to try zip tying these up here um, and see if that will hold. Yeah, I think this is going to work pretty good, actually. And for the sake of not losing them, I'm going to do doubles given that this is supposed to be screwed on. <laughs> and I'm hoping that this will look pretty good and won't move a whole lot. One thing to note that you haven't seen is that my side panels are... well, you've seen them, but they go much further around than the standard ones, so they'll come to about here, so they're gonna hide this stuff and I can actually zip tie that to the cage there if I need to. Alright, that looks pretty slick in my opinion. I've got that 
externally attached reservoir. Now, in the front, the reservoir is a bit more challenging. I was hoping to find a similar place that I could mount them, like over here or something, but with the wheel wells in the way, it just doesn't seem to be working. Um, because not only do you have to worry about the aesthetics, right, but you have to worry about the big tires when you're at full, full lock, um, rubbing. And, uh, I don't want to have any collision issues like that. I was thinking, like, maybe I could mount them here or something. I mean, it might work. But you gotta remember that they gotta articulate, so these hoses can't be just all over the place. So I think what I'm actually gonna end up doing is just using the the clamps to mount them to the shocks up front. But I'm going to pass the hose in. As long as you don't kink it, it should operate just fine. See what I want to do like that, maybe. Mm, maybe I tuck that further in. And I do one of those. Yeah, I'm kind of liking the look of that. Excellent. All right, so lights. Now I've got a lot of lights. <clears throat> You're thinking, where are you going to put all these lights? Because you don't have tail lights. You don't have like what? Like what are you doing with all these? The rock lights are pretty self-explanatory. These are the fun ones, though. So, orange. What am I doing with orange lights? Well. I've got a pair of scale exhausts here from Sideways RC. These are built for drifting. Um, they don't come with the holes. I drilled them out. It took a while. Uh, if you're going to drill through these, these are pretty hard steel. Um, drill a little hole first, then a bigger hole, then the final hole. These are 5 mil lead, so they slot right in. I drilled holes through the Barn Dog Fab metal kit, and they're going to sit right here. So although I'm not going to mount those right now, I need to plan for where the wires are going if you want clean wiring. So, you know, basically this split is wide enough that it'll reach both sides. That's going to be in there. Um, and I could go forward or backward with it. My, oops, I've got three red lights and two yellow lights. So I also have... I can move my mess. I should have cleaned more. Some 3D printed parts. So I have a 3D printer. Um, I don't know how to actually make stuff. I would love to be able to make stuff, but I just don't have the time to learn that at the moment. So I just grab whatever I can find online. And luckily, because the capper is so popular, we have quite a few different options. Um, so we're going to take a look at some options here. I, I have actually more light mounts here than I actually need. All right, we're not going to do the exhaust right now because they're going onto the body panels. So we've got this light bar, we've got these two, and we've got this. So I have three reds. The three reds are set. I know what I'm doing with the three reds, so we're going to start there. So this little piece is 3D printed. Sorry, I'll check my framing. This little piece is 3D printed. And uh, what is it going to do? Actually, you know what? <laughs> I'm making this harder than I need to. I have a stand. <laughs> I should use it. All right, let me reframe it. All right, so this piece is 3D printed. It's going to slot in right there, and it's going to house the three LEDs for the taillights. So we're going to mount these up. I'm going to pause for a minute. i got to get my glue gun out. All right, I've got my glue gun out and heating up. I've got my 
red LEDs here. I've got three of them, a two and a one from my Trick RC, because uh, things come in one, twos, or fours. Three is a pretty odd number, so I have to make up a, a third one here. And one of the things I'm gonna try that I've never tried is with your standard LEDs that shoot a really f long, wide beam, right? These are supposed to be brake lights, so I'm gonna take some thousand grit sandpaper and I'm gonna sand them so they're frosted. And I've been, I've seen online that this works. I might need some more aggressive sandpaper. Oh no, it's working. I just sand it. And that dulls up the finish on it. Now see, so now, instead of being nice and clear, we've got that kind of a uh, matte finish. I'm going to sand all these and we'll be right back. I've got them all sand. Oops, sorry. I've got, <laughs> I've got them all sanded down. We're going to mount them into this little guy. So, all I'm going to do is take my hot glue gun. Now, if you're doing something black, I would recommend using black hot glue. Uh, that is a thing that exists. It's pretty cool. It stops all the light bleed. But, because this is all white rig, I'm going to use the traditional hot glue um, just to you know, make it not as uh, visible. So, and I've got a little stranding in my 3D print here. I need to break. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so basically these slot in, this thing covers up like the entire thing. Honestly, I barely need to hot glue these. They really press fit in pretty good. Um, so we're going to press them all in. Actually, that one's a little looser. So yeah, I definitely need to hot glue them. And that one's quite tight. So see, we've got all three of them in. And this just presses in from here. So I should just have no problem once these are attached. So we're going to glue it. Trying not to burn myself. The trick with the hot gluing 3D printed material is to not melt your 3D printed material. Um, I have some montages you'll have probably seen by this point of me doing these prints. And uh, if you're not into 3D printing, it saves you a lot of money if you're doing scale stuff like this. As long as you don't consider the fact that you end up spending tons of money on a uh, filament that you definitely didn't need to buy. <laughs> so, um, alright, so we've got all three of these. Now, once my cable shielding comes in, I'm going to shield each of these so they're not bright red like this um, running in the back. So, I know with this unit... Um, I also have a 3D printed rear bulkhead that will close this off to keep mud and dirt from getting in there into the motor because I think it's silly that that's wide open. I realize it's cooling, but I don't like it. So I have to route literally everything through the, the small space right behind the cage. So the motor is on the right, the motor is very hot generally. So I'm going to try to mount most of my, route most of my wiring to the left. And yeah, I think basically going right up the side of the gas tank is the way to go for this. As close and as low as I can get it. And then I have a Y splitter that will get involved here to make these a single unit. Do you need brake lights on a competition rock crawler? No. Do they look awesome? Yes. <laughs> so, with these, with the ends of uh, these kind of lights, you can bend them a good bit. Be careful not to bend them too much, or you will snap them, and then you will be out of luck. So, basically, this just kind of presses in here. It will be hot glued eventually. Um, gently in there. Um, I'm going to bend them down just a bit. You don't want to do like 90 degree angles if you can avoid it. As you can see I've just bent them down at an angle. And this will get glued right in there just like that. 
and we'll have three nice tail lights. So, and then the wires, like I said, they'll be loomed, and they'll go right up the side there. So they'll have a black shielding over them, they'll get zip tied into place. So those wires are gonna be coming through right there. As I said, I've got this rear bulkhead that I 3D printed that pops in here. So I need to just make sure that where I'm coming through will work and it's <laughs> I might trim the bulkhead a little. Uh, no, it'll work. Yeah, it'll work. So yep. So it's kind of hard to see in there, but this rear bulkhead goes right there and blocks any mud from coming in. Sorry about that. Camera overheated. Um, I apologize if there's some fan noise. I've got a little fan pointing at it. So I looked at my two options that I printed for my yellow uh, kind of hazard one. So one is this light bar that goes right here. Um, I don't really like the look of that. Uh, it's too off color from the rest of the cage. And I have this nice little mesh net that I printed that's gonna go right there. And I can't do that if I have a light bar. So the other thing I have is these little light buckets. So these are pretty slick. They come with back pieces, just like uh, the, the front buckets. And basically you just, you glue them right there with your LEDs in them. So I'm gonna go with those. I'm gonna get my LEDs glued into these and sand it up. Um, I'm probably going to wait on gluing the actual buckets in, but I'll mock them up. That way we can see uh, exactly where I'm gonna run my wires. So I'm gonna get those sanded and we'll be right back. I've got my yellows mounted inside. Uh, I didn't actually need to glue them because this kit came with uh, backers just like the Capra kit, which is really nice. So we're going to, I think the goal is basically to route these, route everything right there. And I think that's most ideal because then I can sleeve it all together and reduce the number of sleeves I have. So that'll go right about there. And this will go right about there. And obviously we need a little more to make this one work. I don't like that black right there. I might hand paint that to uh, clean that up a little bit. All right, so yeah, that'll basically go there and there. So it's gonna all go around that side, assuming with the sheathing that it fits. Back to where we're mounting our electronics. So, we've got pretty much all the lights in other than the exhausts, um, which uh, are right in the middle, so it doesn't really have any real bearing on that. So, I think based on this, most, basically all of my lights are at the rear. So I think I'm gonna mount the light controller in the back, and then I'm gonna do, you know what, actually I could even mount the light controller in here, if this will reach. Oh, and it'll totally reach. Will it reach if I'm zip tied to the cage though? All right, we're now in ultra wide. Uh, so sorry about the fish eyeing around the corner. This is a GoPro. So uh, with this guy, basically I, I'd be coming here and then going right into the rear box, um, which maybe <laughs> would be a challenge. Yeah, right like that. Yeah, there we go. And then I'd want this, this is going to end up zip tied over here, but I have a ton of extra wire, so. Yeah, that's going to be nice. I'll keep all of my lighting way in the back, out of the way. And then I can basically just wrap around this box actually on either side and to put everything into there. So I'll be able to coil that wire up nice and tight inside there so that just means the only thing i need to do is i'll have to run this out Ooh, but actually while we're talking this through i don't actually think that i can fit that many wires <laughs> through the tiny rear box into the 
gas tank, so I may actually have to drill that if I want to make this plan work. But it seems so much smarter to have the ESC and the transmitter up here in the front than this huge bundly mess of wires when I can tuck literally all the wires into the fuel cell. So I think we're going to maybe drill the tank out a little bit to accommodate more wires. Because it will be much, much cleaner if we do. Yeah, because you see that's the space we're dealing with to get all of these wires into there. So I think we'll drill that out. So we'll do our our lighting controller in here. Actually, maybe we won't. The lighting controller does need... Okay, yeah, actually, I've, I've changed my mind again. So the lighting controller doesn't fit there unless I go this way. And even then, oh yeah, it might fit. It'd be really tight. But it could fit. I actually don't even think there's enough room to bundle all the wires even. So I think we're going to follow the directions and put the receiver back there. Damn. That would have been super convenient if we could have done that. So our receiver. Standard Futaba receiver. We'll get mounted into here. And I'm going to... I think I'm going to mount it with the pins to the rear so I've got a little more room to hide my wire. So I am actually going to stick that in here right now. And it's simple. Oh, this doesn't even have tape on it. Okay, well, uh, the kit came with some 3M tape. It is bigger than I need it to be, so we'll trim that down. Here we go. If you don't have 3M tape, in this hobby, you're going to need it. I do have a whole bunch, but I might as well use what came with the kit. Back off. And stick that. I've got a whole bunch of these three-wire um, extensions all over the place. So, I'm not overly concerned with getting back here with everything because in order for the back fire lights to work I do actually have to run a splitter that feeds into that um, so yeah, all right we're gonna coil the antenna inside yeah so the ESC I've got this very long <laughs> cable um, this has an XT60 on it. I'm gonna chop it off and put a Traxxas connector on there because all my batteries are Traxxas. You can call me a crazy person if you want. I don't care. I don't like it <laughs> um, So with all my wires going left, I'm probably gonna want this on the right. Oh, and we've got our power button too. Um, actually, yeah, so we've got our motor wires. Uh, so all of that needs to be able to go that way I really don't like how the, my my main complaint I think with this unit so far is that your battery wires are kind of intertwined with your motor leads and I kind of wish they were separate like it was just you know positive negative motor motor but it's not the end of the world and we've got our power button so this needs to be accessible given that this you know this cage stays on 99% of the time I'm hoping I can tuck that into the battery box with the battery, is kind of my hope. So we're gonna try that and see how it goes. We tuck our battery in, and then, hmm, oh yeah, yeah, I'll be able to put it on one of these two. I think I'll be able to put 
it right on there.